Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. In this video, we're gonna show you how to rebuild the top end on your YZ125 or 125X. If you have a YZ125, you know how fun they are to rip around, but you do need to replace that piston periodically. So if you've noticed a drop in compression, we're gonna show you how to get it replaced. We're doing this on a 2019 YZ125. The process will be similar for model years ranging 2005 and newer. And it's even gonna be this, a similar process for the 125Xs. Now, even if you have an older 125 that's liquid cooled, the process that we're about to show you should still help you get the job done. You just wanna to refer to your model specific service manual for more information and specs. To do this job, we have a few chemicals. So contact cleaner, some light oil, carbon cleaner, waterproof grease. We're also gonna hone our cylinder. So we have our hone. And then you're gonna need common hand tools. So sockets, Allen keys, torque wrench, pliers, a gasket scraper. We're also using the Motion Pro torque wrench adapter and a spring puller. You're also gonna to wanna to have safety glasses, rags, and some rubber gloves. And again, always refer to your model specific service manual for more information and specs. As far as parts go, we have a lot of different options on our website. We went with the Vertex piston kit. This comes with your piston, piston ring, circlips, and your wrist pin. It does not come with the wrist pin bearing, so make sure you get that separately. We're also replacing our spark plug and using brand new gaskets. These ones are Tusk. We're also using assembly lube and some coolant. The first thing we need to do is gain access to the cylinder head. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the seat and gas tank. Now we're gonna drain our coolant. If you have a skid plate that covers this up, you wanna remove it. So we're just gonna remove this drain bolt. and then open up the radiator cap. Then you can reinstall the drain bolt with a new crush washer. After that, you wanna remove your side panel, silencer, and pipe. All right, now we need to remove these hanger brackets. So I'm just gonna put a five millimeter Allen on one side and we're gonna loosen up the 12 millimeter head nut on the other side. You'll notice there's a washer on the back side of these upper brackets. Now we'll go ahead and remove the brackets. And I like to just keep everything in order and that way I know exactly how everything goes back together. Now I'm gonna remove the spark plug cap, get that out of my way. Remove the radiator mounting bolts, then remove the radiator hose that's on top of the cylinder head. Now, if you wanna make it even easier, you can completely remove the radiators, but again, we're just gonna push them out of the way, and for us, that's gonna be a little less work. Next, remove the spark plug. The spark plug is gonna tell you a lot about the condition of your engine and how everything's working, whether your mixture is too rich or lean. So rich mi mixture is obviously black, Lean would be white, and what you want is more of a golden brown. Now, the other thing you wanna look for is if there's any little metal particles on here, little metal looking BBs. If that's the case, you have some serious issues going on with your motor. Now we're gonna remove our power valve cover. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this gasket and we need to disconnect this linkage right here. So your manual is gonna show you a special tool. I'm just gonna get a T-handle and we'll be able to remove the bolt without putting pressure on the power valve components. And we'll go ahead and remove the spacer. And now we're gonna loosen up the cylinder head nuts in a crisscross pattern. And we can rock the cylinder head off and and catch any of these copper washers that are loose. After that, we're gonna remove the power valve breather hose. Now we're gonna loosen up the cylinder nuts in a crisscross pattern using a 12 millimeter box end wrench. This one is from Motion Pro and it's designed to help torque everything when you go back together. 
And one of these nuts is located in the power valve cover. Now we're gonna rock the cylinder to break it free from that base gasket. And if you need to, you can use a dead blow hammer or soft face mallet to lightly tap the cylinder. So we've broken it free and to help gain some clearance, I'm actually gonna put the piston at its lowest point. So I'm just gonna use the kick starter and hold the cylinder to help do that. Now we're gonna crank that piston back to top dead center and we're gonna take a clean rag and stuff it right next to the connecting rod. And you can use your needle nose pliers to help remove the circlip or a small pick if that's all you have. And then I'm just gonna use my finger to push the wrist pin out. And then we have that needle bearing. We'll go ahead and remove that as well. And you'll notice we have a dowel pin on this stud. There should be another one on this. It probably stuck to the cylinder. You wanna make sure you locate that. The next step is to make sure you get all the gasket material off the crankcase halves. And we're just using a Tusk gasket scraper for that. And I'm also using a rag around these water jackets just to make sure I don't get any material down in there. And we'll finish it off with some contact cleaner and a rag. Before you go back together, you wanna to inspect your connecting rod. So we're gonna start with the big end and the connecting rod, it actually slides back and forth on the pin and we'll have a little bit of rock side to side, but you don't want any up and down motion in this. So what I'm gonna do is slide the rod to one side and pull straight up and down. If you can feel any up and down motion, you wanna get the connecting rod replaced, and rebuild the crank, or you can replace the whole assembly. Now, if you're not sure if you feel something or not, you can always check the side clearance. So our manual gives us a spec of 0.06 to 0.64 millimeters. So if you have a bigger side clearance than 0.64 millimeters, you need to rebuild your crank. So for ours, we're actually measuring 0.4 millimeters. Ours feels good. So now we're gonna inspect the small end of the connecting rod. So with this, we have our new wrist pin bearing. You always wanna replace that as well as your wrist pin. We're just gonna insert that into the small end and we'll simply pull straight up and down on it. If you feel any play in there, then you wanna get the connecting rod replaced, but ours feels good. So we're gonna move on to cleaning and inspecting all of the cylinder parts. Now with our cylinder on our bench, we're actually gonna clean this up. So we're gonna take all the parts out of the power valve and get all the carbon off them and then clean all these gasket surfaces and remove our O-rings. So we're gonna start with the power valve. We have a screw right here. Looks like somebody's been in here before. It might be stripped out. So I'm gonna use an impact driver to help remove that screw. I'm gonna pull that retaining plate out. Now we're gonna remove these four screws and the cover. Now to remove the power valve assembly, I'm gonna take my three millimeter Allen, loosen this bolt up. So with that bolt and retaining plate out of the way, we can go ahead and slide this shaft out from the side. And we have a couple spacers and a spring assembly we'll remove. And we're just gonna lay all these parts out in order. Then we'll remove the four screws that hold the power valves in. So we'll slide that power valve out, kind of sticks. So I'm, I'm just working these back and forth a little bit. All that oil's making all the parts stick together. Now I'm gonna use a pick to remove the O-rings. And we're gonna use a flat blade screwdriver to remove the power valve seal. And just pay attention to this orientation. And then from here, we can start scraping gaskets. So we have one on this cover. We'll scrape this surface on the side of the cylinder and we'll scrape off the base gasket. So from here, you can see we need to clean up some of this oil and other stuff from our cylinder. And then we're gonna inspect that Nicosil coating. So 
So we've got our cylinder cleaned up. We're going to inspect this Nicosil coating, starting with a visual inspection. And if you need to know more about this, we do have a Nicosil cylinder inspection video along with a honing video that explains things more in depth. But essentially, you're just checking for a crosshatch pattern and making sure there's no visual damage to the Nicosil, like any chipping or pitting or any deep grooves. So if you see any deep grooves in that wall, run your fingernail across there. If your fingernail catches, then you want to get the cylinder recoated or replaced. Now, the other thing, we're going to deglaze the cylinder so our rings seal good. Now, some people don't like to do this, and some people do. I've had really good luck with it. So we're going to hone this cylinder out and then do the final cleaning on the cylinder. We'll wash this in soap and water and then use some carbon clean on our power valve parts. Now for the cylinder head, if you had any overheating issues or were burning coolant, you definitely want to check this for warpage and that procedure is outlined in the service manual. But for us, we're just going to clean the carbon away. Now to get the correct piston for your cylinder, if you're going aftermarket, just get the standard size. If you're going OEM, look at the side of your cylinder. This one's labeled B and then you'll find the matching piston under the OEM diagram. And then the manual, it might even give you a color with that, whether it's orange, red, or anything else. So reference your manual on that. But again, if you're going aftermarket, just get the standard size and you'll be good. Now we're gonna check our piston ring end gap. So how I'm gonna do that is insert the ring into the cylinder and we're gonna level it up with the dome of the piston. And I'm just gonna press it down until we're to that black line on the coating for this piston and make sure we're level all the way around. And then you want to check the minimum clearance. So minimum for a stock piston is going to be 0.5 millimeters. But for us, our piston ring actually came with some instructions. So we worked the math out for ours and you know, it's going to be this 0.33 millimeter filler gauge. So this barely slides in. So we know we have enough clearance. Typically, you're not gonna have to change this clearance, but it's good to have a peace of mind and make sure you don't damage your engine. If your ring end gap is too tight, you can use a file in a vise to bring that ring end gap into spec. Now we're gonna install the power valve seal. We're gonna have that open side of the seal facing inward. So I'm just gonna apply some grease to it and I'm gonna use my eight millimeter T-handle to press it into place. Now we're gonna inspect these power valves for any wear. So you can see on ours, we have a little bit of wear towards that corner, but it's not bad enough that we're gonna replace it. And then you also wanna inspect both of these springs and make sure they're not broken. If all that looks okay, we're gonna apply a light oil to the power valve parts. Now we're gonna install the two power valves and we're just making sure the tapered side is facing down. Then we'll install the four mounting bolts and torque them to 5.8 foot-pounds. Now we're gonna install the power valve shaft through that new seal we just installed. And as we push that into place, we're gonna go ahead and install the spacer so we have the link lever with the springs on it and the bolt hole will be facing up. And you're just gonna line up these springs with the power valves. And we have another spacer. Line up the bolt hole on that power valve shaft. And then we have this retaining plate and the longer side is gonna be facing the power valves up towards those. And then this bolt is supposed to be torqued to 2.9 foot-pounds. So from here, we're gonna check our work and I'm gonna rotate the power valve shaft and make sure the power valve works correctly and smooth. So if it binds up at all, you wanna find out why and get that repaired. After that, we're gonna install the retaining plate and our screw. And the screw, again, it's gonna be torqued to 2.9 foot-pounds. 
Now we'll install the power valve cover with our new gasket. Now we're gonna prep our piston. This arrow faces the exhaust side and we're gonna start by installing the right circlip first. Now the final position of the circlip needs to be at the 12 or six o'clock position, but to help get this in, I'm gonna have the gap end right where that little notch is and then we're gonna rotate the clip. To install the piston ring, we're gonna make sure the letter is facing up. So on this one, it says T, little tiny marking right there. And then we need to line up the ring end gap with the locating pin in the ring land. We're just gonna work this ring on, starting on one side, and wrap it all the way around to the other side. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and apply assembly lube to all of these parts or some two stroke oil. Make sure you get some of that assembly lube in the wrist pin bosses as well. And we're gonna apply it to the cylinder. Now back at the bike, we're gonna install the two dowel pins onto the left side and then the base gasket. So for right now, we have a rag around the connecting rod. So I'm gonna apply some assembly lube to that small end, and then we can install that wrist pin bearing. We'll install the piston and make sure that arrow is facing the exhaust side. And with this wrist pin, we're gonna install it partway into that wrist pin boss. We'll slide this over the small end of the connecting rod and push that wrist pin through. And then we can install the circlip on this side the same way we did on the right side. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that rag. We're gonna install the cylinder. When we do that, we wanna make sure the ring end gap is still lined up with the locating pin. Compress the ring and slide the cylinder down. And since we didn't remove our radiator, we rotated the piston to its lowest point or BDC. And once the cylinder is on, I recommend holding it down with your hand and operate the kickstarter. Make sure that piston goes up and down freely. Now I'm gonna wipe up the excess assembly lube from the top of the piston. And I'm gonna install the cylinder bolts in a crisscross pattern and torque them to 22 foot pounds. Now with the Motion Pro tool, you can either use the correct torque spec with the torque wrench at 90 degrees to the wrench, or you can use the math formula that comes with the tool and set your correct torque spec. Now I'm gonna install new cylinder head O-rings. Just make sure those are sitting all the way down into place. And then we're gonna install our cylinder head now we can torque the cylinder nuts to 20 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern. Next we'll install the spacer. And then we can install the power valve linkage arm. I'm just gonna pry up on that linkage with a screwdriver until that arm pops into place. Now we can install the bolt. We're gonna use a screwdriver between the linkage arm and the cylinder and torque the bolt to 3.6 foot-pounds. We're also using just a little bit of grease to hold that gasket in place. Then we can install the power valve cover with the new gasket. Now we're gonna install our new spark plug and we're gonna torque it to 14 foot-pounds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the spark plug cap. Next, we're gonna install the engine hangers and tighten the nuts to 24 foot-pounds. Now we're gonna reinstall our radiator hose, the radiator bolts, and the louvers.
After that, we can reinstall the power valve breather hose. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our exhaust. We're gonna use the two new O-rings that came in our top end kit. Then we can fill the radiator up with some coolant. After that, we'll install our gas tank. And then you're gonna to wanna to check and make sure that you're running a fresh air filter. After that, we can reinstall the seat. At this point, we're ready to start the bike up. For us, we're gonna warm it up and let it go through a heat cycle and take it easy our first ride out. And then after that, we're gonna ride it like normal. But whatever you do, you wanna to refer to your model specific service manual and follow any procedures that are outlined in that. That's all there is to rebuilding the top end on your YZ125. If you need any of the parts that we use today, check out our website. We have a lot of different options on there and offer free shipping on orders over $75. And for more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.